Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. I am so excited today because I have somebody who is actually a friend of mine. Yes, we make plans outside of work, and I love her so much because she is a Virgo like me, and we are so similar in so many ways. Um, you know her as the one and only Cherie Deville. Hi. Amazing intro. I love. Thank you. I was just. <laughs> Off the cuff. Oh, just off. It's just, you know, off just the cuff praise. Off the cuff. <laughs> so, Sheree, you are now the internet's favorite stepmom. Yeah, I titled myself that. So <laughs> I know. I, I've noticed that. I've noticed that, like, change in promo. And it's like, you've really... That's Danny Daniels' fault. Yes. Yeah, I made a joke about it on Instagram or Twitter one day, like, in one of my captions. And she immediately texts me and she's like, so is that your new branding? I'm like, um, I guess it is now. <laughs> It's that a, you've said something, yes. <laughs> so you've like embraced the stepmom genre, which yeah, yeah. is very prolific mm-hmm. in our industry. And, you know, some people say is overdone. It's overdone. <laughs> it's overdone. I won't, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm going to tell you right now it's overdone. But like, what isn't, you yeah. know, big jugs, big, like, that's what porn is. Like yeah. a series of like cute tropes and little genres that become popular. So I've been you know, placed by others in my niche. And then as my brand grew, I just sort of embraced it. Yeah. You know, uh, other people, other companies built this gorgeous fan base for me as like a MILF cougar stepmom. And, you know, as I went on to be able to make money on my own, I, I scooped it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I think um, you've definitely embraced it and you are like perfect. You're also too, like, this is one of the things that I love about you. You're such an intelligent woman. And you are such like a quote unquote normal person. Like, you know, you can have very normal conversations about everyday stuff, but like when you get in front of the camera, the shit that comes out of your mouth is unfucking real. And it's like, I'm always so impressed. I have a potty mouth. (laughs) Where does that come from? Like, does it just fly out of your mouth? You don't even think about it? It does just fly out of my mouth and I don't even think about it. Bizarrely. Yeah. I just feel like like whatever moment somebody gives me, whether it's like a whole script or like a person to be, I just try and brainstorm like what would that person be saying? What would that person be doing? What is like the weirdest, funniest shit that could still stay within the lane of that genre? You know, and sometimes I miss the mark and it gets too com- comedic. But, you know, I feel like a lot of times I, I stay well in that lane. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, it's um, it's it's so good. There's definitely been so many times where I'm just off camera. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is your favorite role to do? Do you have like a favorite? My favorite role to do? You know, that's a good question. I like the porn part of porn is easy and fun. You know, whether you're having aggressive sex or romantic sex or, you know, I'm the controlling one, I'm the submissive, that part is it's almost human nature. So like the part where I feel like I'm still like a musician and an artist and still have like my moment of like jazz is the dialogue part. Um, So I really do like being given characters, even if it's some stupid, like not that Gonzo is stupid, but even if it's a, a Gonzo film, it helps me to be someone other than just me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, who am I? Even if it's just like you are the sluttiest whore that's ever entered this building, that's still enough for me to be like, well, what is the sluttiest whore shit that could come out of my mouth? Like, I love having something to kind of riff off of. It like, yeah, it brings me, it brings me joy and bizarrely fills me with like a sense of pride that I'm like creating like this erotic content for people that's more than just like a dick going into a pussy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 You definitely like create this whole fantasy and, and, and yeah. And this whole, like, I mean, you're so into it and you really, the thing that I think a lot of people don't do that you do so well is you stay in character throughout the scene. Like what a lot of people do is they say their dialogue that they have to say at the beginning of the scene. And then like, as soon as the sex starts, like they drop that character that they're supposed to be, but you stay in that character. uh, But like, that is what brings me joy. Like what, even if the character is a silly porn trope, like what would a Midwestern soccer mom be vibing with right now? Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I feel like that adds because 
I mean, a lot of people might fast forward through the dialogue, right? So I feel like even during the sex, there is a moment to be in that genre because if someone is wanting stepmom porn or MILF porn or submissive porn or like they don't want, I assume, or when I watch porn, I don't want the the whole thing that's brought you to that point to be dropped like a hot potato. Yeah, totally. I want that fetish, even if it's just a verbal fetish, to like keep going. Yeah. Because that's what really does it for me. That's what separates... Like, if I just wanted dick and pussy, I would probably just want gonzo, but I like storyline porn for the reason that it it, it is. It, it makes the whole thing something a little different, something a little more special, and honestly, a little more naughty. Because for me, you can be doing a perfectly, like, vanilla scene, like, no slapping, no choking, no rough penetration, and still make it filthy as fuck. Yeah. If you stay in character say some dirty shit, get weird, like, you know, really explore that moment. It was fun for me. Yeah, Yeah. for me, definitely. And I don't know if it's just, I mean, apparently studies have shown that women want more of a storyline. But I definitely like it's the talking that that gets me like the And and the people always ask me, when was the, have you ever been turned on shooting a scene? And it's, my answer is like 99.9% of the time, no. Well, because you're shooting a scene. Yeah, like your brain is shooting a scene. Yeah. yeah, I'm like thinking about angles. I'm thinking about, um, you know, lighting. I'm thinking about time. Yeah. <laughs> like, do, have we shot enough time? Are we going over? Yeah. Like, is the location owner going to be home in 15 minutes and walk through that door? Yeah. Like, you know, that kind of thing. But the one time that I did get like a li- maybe a little, my ears yeah. perked up a little yeah. bit was – with Tommy Pistol. And it was because we were doing a professor student scene, which is totally like a fetish of mine. Uh, And he was the professor Mm -hmm. and the things that he was saying was so hot. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And that's one of the reasons why he is not just one of my top go to's, but a lot of people's go to's. Mm -hmm. Because of that, especially like, if, if someone especially asked me, because one of my favorite things to do is be like submissive in BDSM and that's not something I get to do on film a lot. Yeah. People always put you as like right. the dom. You <laughs> which do is so fine. Well. Which is fine. Um, but for me, if I get to do that, I want someone who can talk to me. Uh, sure. Beat the crap out of me. Give me rough sex. All of that's fine. But if you want me to like cry, if you want me to feel it, if you want me to like really get submissive, like really in my heart, you got to say some shit. Yeah. And there aren't many people that can do that. And he's one of them. So yeah. what, like, what so I try to give that to my talent too. So yeah. like, maybe they don't even want it, but like, I'm always trying to like, yeah, find that thing that I can say that makes their, oh, oh. Yeah. 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 Even yeah. if I'm, even if it's not in the character of the scene, whispered in their ear like once you get to know your talent you're like oh I see you yeah 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 yeah. what are like some of the things that you like to hear like so if you're being submissive and someone's dominating you is there anything like specific like what kind of dirty talk is it? probably not super specific but like if you're going to be dominant and you're going to be in control of me well why like paint a picture in my mind Mm -hmm. you know make me feel it with your words like I want to feel it even if I'm watching this movie, Mm -hmm. even if I don't feel how hard you're pinching me or how hard you're fucking me or how hard you slap me. Like, I want to feel this emotionally. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, that probably depends on, like, the character of the film. But if it's supposed to be scary, scare me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I, I love that. And for whatever reason probably because it's in porn you can't actually like hit or beat someone that hard and that's fine so you are left to those spots in your imagination to make it real yeah and for me the verbal stuff really really helps like bring all of it like home so I can get to that really beautiful subby space yeah yeah so um going back to the roles that you've played um what are some of your favorite maybe like movies that you've done Mm -hmm. specific characters that you've played that like you really enjoyed um I've done so many amazing things like specifically I feel like with Brie Mills Mm -hmm. she writes like the coolest scripts and even in her AMA the other day she was talking about this movie I did years ago with her A Delicate Vice Mm -hmm. and I was a hooker and Kenna James was my driver. And that sounds like such a like simple plot, but like 
it was fucking like I cried genuinely during the sex scene. Like because the whole movie, all of the dialogue, like those three, two, three, however many days of work were so emotional. The characters were so connected. You know, the the everything was so nuanced, like it got to the point where it felt like beautiful and real to me. So like during the culmination of the movie, when we had that like sex scene where she knows like I'm never going to really love her, but I'm like, like, that's what I like. Wow. I I like sell it to me. If you sell it to me, I will act it the fuck out yeah. because I like playing pretend. Like, I feel like that's part of the reason that I'm in this whole job. Like, glam me up. Give me the fantasy. Let me play another role. Let me wear crazy clothes I would never wear. Like, I love to role play in this safe space, mm -hmm. you know? And, and I'm like a neurotic Virgo. So there's not a lot of places that I really feel like good and safe. Like, I did a lot of swinging before porn, but like, I would have never done a gang bang at the swingers club. Like I would have never felt truly safe to do a lot of those things. I would have never like spent three days getting into character with someone to the point where I could cry during sex. But like, that's fucking beautiful to me, mm -hmm. you know? So the fact that porn can like bring me all of this like erotic pleasure in this like huge variety of like experiences and for my neurotic like safety rule following self to feel really at home is like really fun. It's like, it's like a Cherie playground, honestly, like this pretty person saying this crazy shit doing this thing. And I get to dress like this with pro hair and makeup. Like, yeah. <laughs> so what you just said goes against the narrative that so many people buy into, mm -hmm. um, about the porn industry. And so many people who've been in the porn industry for a long time have said, like, this is a place where I can safely act out my fantasies. Like, 100%. But like, most people see the porn industry as a very unsafe place to be. And they think that, you know, yeah. people on set are always being abused and manipulated mm -hmm. and exploited. So what is it about porn that makes you feel like it's a safe space for you? I mean, porn just is objectively safe. You know, we have testing. We have on-set liaisons making sure you're safe. We have a huge crew making sure you're safe. You have safe words. You have, well, I have, you know, I'm an adult with a, a strong sense of like control and autonomy. So I feel very comfortable saying no. Mm -hmm. You know, all these things make me feel super safe. All, all the talent, you know, even in, and I think in-person work is fantastic and beautiful, but you know, there's a, a power dis discrepancy. Like, the person, the, the provider is getting paid. The other person is paying. So, mm -hmm. you know, the provider has the power. Um, I like that I'm getting paid and my co-star is getting paid. Like we're on the same plane. Mm -hmm. uh, all of those things make me feel super, super safe. As for why the public thinks it's unsafe, um, I don't think that that's based in reality at all. I have so many different theories, but like what I kind of come back to is that I wonder what people love to shit on us. Mm -hmm. People love to, to white knight us. People love to think we need saving. And I feel like a lot of that actually feeds into people's erotic fantasies of us. Mm -hmm. And I feel like especially men... I wonder how they would feel if they really accepted that we are autonomous, powerful, and completely joyously in control of our professions. I think there is part of the dialogue that society puts on us that that is like part of the sexual sexualization process almost. You know what I mean? Like objectified, nothing, worthless only job we could get. Like, I wonder if there's something in that that makes us feel safe to them. Mm. You know what like I mean? Like non-threatening, you mean? Non-threatening and just like... Like a wife whose husband maybe sees an in-person service provider can reassure herself by saying, oh, she's just a whore. Yeah, she's, she's worthless. just a whore. She's, worth nothing. she's worthless. It or doesn't matter. Or someone whose matter. boyfriend watches a lot of porn. Right, they're nothing. They're practically not real people. If you met them in person, you would hate them. They're all drug addled losers. Like decreasing our value like that helps us feel safe. 
Mm. I think. That makes you know? sense. Because our industry is and has been safe for a really long time. Mm -hmm. So why is the mainstream dialogue still against us? I think people feel so shameful about themselves and so shameful about sex and so shameful about expressing their sexual selves to see powerful people doing it so openly and brazenly. Like you kind of got to shit on that. Otherwise, like, what does that say about you? Right. right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and no, I, that can't be powerful and beautiful. I, I can't feel that way. You know, sex must be shameful and shitty. Yeah. And yeah. you all, it's funny too, because you always see people like specifically referring to the female talent. You never really hear a lot of people oh, talking about how like it's the, the male talent is oh, no, being no, no, exploited. No, 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 no. The yeah. male talent gets jobs outside of porn easily. The male talent is glorified. You know, it's not... And and even if you talk to people that they couldn't possibly be used, they have penises, mm -hmm. right? Like that's ridiculous. Do you think that so? The because you have a penis hanging down your legs means yeah. that you can't be abused, and my vagina means that I can't. Like, what kind of misogynistic old school crap is that? I think that that alone shows you the dialogue people almost like need to feel to watch it. Yeah. Do you, you think know? that the actual penetration has something to do with it? Because, you know, a lot of girls, and you for a long time were girl, girl only. And Absolutely. that feels like more acceptable, right? Absolutely. And then also, um, you know, there's even like going, even going back to, even if we start talking about like gay sex, if we go back mm -hmm. to like, you know, Roman Top times spottoms. where, where, where emperors had, um, you know, like their boys that, mm -hmm. that they would have sex with, it was like seen as okay back then if you were the penetrator, but if you were on the receiving end, that was like emasculating in some way. So do you think like the penetration has something to do with that power dynamic? It probably does because I think a lot of um, femdom artists that don't receive penetration and only provide penetration mm -hmm. might not get this quite the same vibe, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's you know, like the sex or gender you were born with. I don't know if it, I don't know. It, and I don't know if it's different in other countries, but it really feels strong, at least in the United States. And even when I transitioned, like you said, from girl, girl to boy, girl, um, I know a lot of people don't make that transition because they don't want to decrease the amount of human beings they can date. Mm -hmm. Because more men specifically are willing to date you bizarrely if you're only having sex with other women that somehow doesn't feel as, uh, I don't know, threatening. insecure, threatening, yeah. which is bizarre because to me that should feel like more threatening, if anything, because like you don't have the same equipment, you can't compete, but mm -hmm. our society has sexualized female-female relationships so much that they almost feel hot mm -hmm. and not threatening, which is fucked up in itself. Yeah, because it's you like know? almost every boyfriend is okay with you having sex with another girl, but not right. another man. Like if it's a threesome that your guy wants, like he wants another woman in there. He doesn't want another man. A in lot there. of times. Yeah. yeah. I, I wonder if for the new generation that it, I hope to God that's changing for them because these gender roles are stifling. Yeah. To be honest. They really are. And they I, really are. I didn't really think about that so much until I started doing this podcast. I have to admit, I had a lot of like misconceptions about like what was emasculating for men and everything until I started talking to people like Michael Vegas. Yeah. You know, who likes to be pegged, but like nobody, I don't think anyone would say like Michael's an, a, a, no. an unmasculine man, whatever that even Dude, means. Men's G spots are in their ass. Women's G spots are not in their ass. Why doesn't every man want to be pegged? I think it's because we've said a lot, like most men would love to have anal sex with their girlfriend right. and would love for them to love that. Mm -hmm. I think a huge reason that a lot of men don't explore their prostate, like a huge pleasure zone is because we've told them that it's emasculating. Yeah. That's terrible. Yeah, that's so true. So many more women have anal sex and we do not have a G-spot in our ass than men. Like that doesn't make any physi physiological sense. Yeah. That is crazy. Yeah. That is pure society. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So speaking of, um, you know, all of these, uh, all of these roles that you've done, all the success you've had in mainstream, um, you, like so many other performers, have 
other personal content platforms like Snapchat, mm-hmm. like OnlyFans. Mm-hmm. Um, I know you're doing quite well. And many other performers have decided to stop working for mainstream companies, mm-hmm. only focus on their OnlyFans. Totally. You just signed a contract with browsers. Yeah, I did the opposite. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm like doubling down. Hell right. yeah. <laughs> so what made you decide to do that in a world where you could survive on your own? You know, so many things. Uh, one, I'm super risk averse. Mm-hmm. Just as a person, I always like to think ahead, think about crazy worst case scenarios that'll probably never um, happen. So like, like falling into a well, like falling into a well, <laughs> breaking both thing. ankles and then not having enough content for the next four years. Like, yeah, like crazy shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm only two years ahead. That'll never work. Like <laughs> crazy shit. Um, yeah. So what if, you know, like so many things, uh, like, let's just use OnlyFans as a really specific example. I've only had OnlyFans since the pandemic because I had extra time on my hands. I've been in porn 11 years, and I honestly feel like I make my money completely differently every year. Mm. And there's no reason for me to assume that that won't continue. I've seen that this is the pattern, and my brain tells me that you're going to continue to have to pivot every few years. The one thing that has been consistent is studio work. Mm -hmm. They've built my whole brand. They have traffic I could never afford. Um, They have eyeballs that I don't have on my billboards, billboards being my own social media and the traffic I can afford to buy. So I, I don't personally see the logic in quitting. You know, if I were burnt out and I didn't like it or I had never liked it and was just waiting for this opportunity, I can see the logic, you know, for any emotional reason. But financially, it doesn't make sense, not because I don't make way more money on all my platforms, but because I can't buy what they can buy me. Mm. You know, I can't I can't buy the I can't afford the exposure that they can buy me. I can't. I can't even afford the productions that yeah. they can provide for me. And as we all know, once you drop out of mainstream porn, all you're left with is the billboard you've created, your social media, which one can be taken away at any second. Yeah. And which we see all the time. Right. Porn stars, Instagram. Right. And you have to always. start over. So to me, this is this is my safe space. And I'm super happy to like branch out and bank money during the years that I'm able to bank money and squirrel it away, you know, for years when I might have to make my money in a less lucrative way. Mm -hmm. You know, at right now, I feel like the consistency are, are, are the companies. They, they built my brand. They created Cherie DeVille. They created every single one of my fans that I'm lucky enough to monetize off of. I know every other performer feels the opposite, but I, I, that is what I believe. Not that I didn't work really, really, really hard, but like, I don't know that I could have gone the completely independent route, just do Pornhub and create this 3 million follower Instagram without top companies making me me. Right. And that doesn't mean I think I owe them anything. I don't. I don't think I owe them anything. But I think it wouldn't be a good financial move for me to drop off. I think I would have a few years that I could kind of like grab onto those coattails, but it would dwindle. Yeah. You know, and I don't want to dwindle. I want to continue to grow. Do you feel that studios are treating talent differently these last few years? Because I can tell you just like from an insider producer's perspective, like there was a lot of meetings that I had over quarantine about the way that talent is treated. How can we improve the way that we treat talent? Um, How can we, you know, ensure a safe onset culture? Have have you noticed that at all? I'm super glad that everyone's trying to make everything better and safer. I've definitely noticed that talent... I'm the weirdest person ever. I've noticed that talent is treating companies shittier. <laughs> yes, there's like that. I'm. Yeah. I, I'll just say it, and I'm not some like company spokesperson. Like yeah. I work for myself. I'm I'm contracted, but you know, Cherie Deville brand is my most my my passion. It's right. my my bank account. But I'm not saying you have to work seven days a week. But if you call me and offer me a job, and I say yes. I've said yes. Yeah. 
I'm going to show up right. to that work. What I don't understand is people getting a few dollars in their pocket in a, and let's be honest, those dollars, OnlyFans specifically could go down at any moment. Yeah. I mean, we saw um, the rug almost get pulled out. We from know under that OnlyFans has the network effect. And yes, we could all pivot to another platform that will not have the network effect that will not have all of us on it, on it. Instagram is Instagram because it's fucking name three of its competitors. You want to go on there and make money? Yeah. No, there's no value. Yeah. You know, so ew. Drop out if you want to drop out. Quit porn if you want to quit porn. But doing what a lot of people are doing, which is not quitting and burning your bridges, like, what the fuck? Yeah. Quit and come back in two years. That's yeah. great. Yeah. But, and I'm going to say ladies, because I see this more with the, the ladies. Ladies, I don't care how much money you are making. $200,000 a month, great. First of all, save it. You're only 20. Mm -hmm. You got to live till you're 105, right? Yeah. So maybe don't spend any of it. And I mean that literally. Mm -hmm. And uh, don't burn your bridges because a month from now, six months from now, five years from now, what if you, what if you need those companies again? Work yeah. once a month. Keep your commitments. Be kind and professional. Like I'm not asking for you to kiss ass, but I, I'm concerned that a lot of people are going to really ruin their careers. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm totally wrong. No, I've seen that too. I've seen a lot of like, fuck you, mainstream fuck studios. You, fuck I'm making you money all. on my own. I'm it's making like... money on OnlyFans. And it's like, for your sake, I hope this lasts forever. But from what I've seen in the past 11 years, that's very fucking unlikely. Yeah. It's never happened, but maybe this will be the one time and I'll just eat crow and be totally wrong. Or maybe this will be like everything else and end way sooner than we want it to. Yeah. I mean, I'm so with you on that. And I've been in the industry 23 years now and I can tell you, so you've really, yeah. I've really seen the ups and the downs. Um, and, and you've probably seen stuff like where someone's like, fuck you, I'm quitting. I'm the yeah. best shit. I've got this now. And, and then, then they're they like, come, like crawling back quietly. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Like I don't put yourself in that position. I made $3 million, but I spent it all on rent and this great car and I have nothing. And it turns out I, yeah. I can't get another job and I have to live on sex work till I'm 90 and I didn't save anything. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's the other thing, unless we're all different humans, unless as a woman specifically, because the men can go on to other things more easily and maybe the stigma will change so that we can too. Women in porn save your money. You probably have to live on this money for the rest of your life. If you are living paycheck to paycheck, making what's really an absurd amount of money, because we make an absurd amount of money, even I don't care where you are on the spectrum. You know what I mean? Save it, save it, save it. Live small. Mm -hmm. Who cares if someone comes to your house and they're like, oh, I thought you were popular. Don't you have? No, I don't have nicer shit than this. Yes, this is my house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have a savings account, so it's it. Yeah, you know, it's so. This makes so much more sense when you're older. When it's young, it's when you're young. It's so hard to like not, you know, want to spend it on everything. I just remember like you know how when I was young. Like I remember I went through this whole thing where I decided that I was just gonna like buy all these designer handbags. Like they're still sitting in my closet. Like totally worthless. Yeah. I spent so much money on them. Like what the fuck was I thinking? Like wanting a nice car, and mm -hmm. and now I'm just like. It's yeah, it's all about just having money set aside for the what if, because yeah, yeah. like if you don't have a safety net, well, you it's don't not have anything. even a what if most of us are not going to be physically able to work when we're 70, 80 or 90. Yeah. And like our government's not going to take care of us. So yeah. Yeah. So true. Yeah. <laughs> all right, guys, hang tight. We'll be right back with more. If you're here, it's probably because you're a fan of my podcast, Holly Randall Unfiltered. Well, that's great because I'm a fan of my podcast too. Now, if you don't know what Patreon is, it's a crowdfunding platform that allows people to make contributions on a monthly basis. Because this podcast costs money to make, maybe even more so than others. I'm obsessed with quality. So since the beginning, I have always recorded in a studio, had a professional sound engineer, and recorded professional video. 
All of these things cost money, as you can imagine. And I also made a pretty scary decision this year to cut down on my directing gigs so that I could focus more on this podcast, which is why I need your help now more than ever. But don't worry, I'm not asking you to give me something for nothing. In exchange for your contributions, I offer so many perks. For example, access to the live streams of all of my interviews, a bonus podcast that I do called My LA Porn Life, Q&As where the stars answer your specific questions, behind the scenes interviews, merchandise such as mugs, shirts, and stickers, access to my private Snapchat, and so much more. You can join for as little as $5 a month and help me change the way the world sees the adult industry and sex work. So take a look around and see everything that I have to offer. I really hope that you'll join and be a part of our little community. Hey guys, we are back. So Sheree, you've doled out some wonderful advice for, you know, younger people, maybe people new coming into the industry. What do you think that there's something that the porn industry really needs that it doesn't have right now? Like, is there anything about the industry that you'd like to see change? You know, and it's changing already, but the thing that I'm most excited about that I'm seeing the change in is that we're not like separating performers as much based on like gender and sexuality. Mm. And I think that's beautiful because, I mean, everybody watches porn. And when we have like, I know we, it's always like chicken or the egg, what came first? Like, well, the consumer wants this crazy shit, so we're going to give it to them. Like, yeah, but we also can do stuff that furthers, you know, society a little bit. When we're, when we show mainstream erotic art that breaks down societal boundaries or uses non-binary people, trans people, like lets people who are only on the quote gay side onto the straight side, like to not fucking have side, like if we can be cool enough to open things up, I feel like that can set at least an erotic example Mm -hmm. to the world of not being such a fucking dick. You know what I mean? (laughs) And maybe not labeling people, labeling people and genres so fucking offensively, maybe being a little bit less like racist, like can, you know what I mean? I'm not saying we're good, but at least I'm starting to see, to some, see changes. some changes. Yeah. So, you know, that's super hopeful to me. I'm really, yeah. really into that. Some big changes that I've seen recently, the most recent I've seen is um, browsers having trans scenes on browsers. Girl, girl has... scenes. Girl, girl. Yes. Yes. Not like labeling it some bullshit or I can be in a scene with people of multiple different ethnic backgrounds and not like label it some crazy racist shit. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. 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 It's definitely, um, it's definitely changed. And yeah, I don't know, like, can porn be like a shining example to the rest of the world? I know that sounds like insane, but I mean, if as many people watch porn as, you know, we know to be true, like, could we subconsciously be sending out positive messages. I don't know. Is that such a crazy idea? No, I think maybe it's a bold statement, but I 100% think so. Like if in everything that you've ever watched erotically separates people. Yeah. What's that? Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting how like also though to porn has almost been like that last acceptable place, acceptable, I say with air quotes to like be racist. Do you know what I mean? Like with our whole like, which that's because we say, like, I don't think porn, well, who knows who's what. I don't think pornographers at large are racist. Right. Even when pornographers create racist content, like, I've been on set days where everyone's kind of, like, uncomfortably laughing about it. Like, yeah. I'm not saying this is good, yeah. right? But it's, like, that chicken or the egg moment where we're like, well, our customers are racist as fuck, and they love this racist fucking content, so I guess... We want money, so we'll keep making it. Mm -hmm. But I think finally we're like, you know what? Fuck that. Fuck them. If they want racist fucking, you know what? You can fucking find it somewhere else. So I'm glad at least some of the top companies are being like, no, we're not going to provide you with your stupid ass content anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? You might like it, but we don't. Right. Yeah. Good. And and it's just take a stand against money. And it's, it's, you know, and I think 
too, when you're a bigger studio, um, maybe you do have, you know, some kind of, what's the word, not requirement, but, um, a duty to perhaps be a little bit more sensitive with what you're putting out there. Like you, you yeah. are a large company, like a gamma or a mind geek or, or whatnot. Uh, yeah, like you the have the boys, money, yeah. like you're doing well, like you don't mm-hmm. have to make like you're not gonna like go under to make this content you don't have to make that genre yeah yeah you don't have to label things that way people will still like do you know what I mean Mm -hmm. like yeah and it's like if we as the adult industry want to have want to erase the stigma that follows us and if we want to change the way that people perceive us maybe it's important that you know we really think about the messages that we're sending out there absolutely and not just to be like well you wanted it it's like, well, yeah, we created it though. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's like, there's, there's both are true. Yeah. You know, there's both like, but we can't just sit here and laugh privately because mainstream doesn't know we're laughing at them. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. You yeah. see the scripts where like, Ooh, well, okay, here we go. Let's do this. Like <laughs> they don't know we're laughing. Yeah. They don't know. We think it's ridiculous yeah. for some reason. People think like even my fans are like, Oh, did you really, did I really do? No. <laughs> you think there's just cameras in the room? Like, what? No one says that about Seinfeld. Yeah. No one's like, did you really? Like, no, nah, bitch, no, this is a sitcom. What the fuck are you even talking about? Like, but they think what we do is real. So for better or worse, we have to keep that ridiculousness in mind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you started writing for the Daily Beast. You've been writing some really amazing opinion pieces. Um, I was like really angry, but thank yeah, you. But, you know, I mean, look, there's a lot of reasons to be angry these days. Um, what prompted that? And are you writing for them like on a consistent basis? Do you have like some kind of contract or is it just like whenever you have something that you want to say? I do not have a contract. Um, mostly like they, they took me. <laughs> like if I'm being real, like. They, they let me write for them, mm-hmm. you know, and, and that's not to like talk shit about myself, but I think we all know that people don't really take pornographers voices seriously. Mm-hmm. So I think that, and, and, and when we do get taken seriously, it's usually involved in some sort of stupid scandal. Mm-hmm. So it's really, I'm impressed with them for even giving a pornographer the opportunity to just say shit that might not even be about porn Mm. to like, I don't know, be like a a human with like opinions. Do you know what I (laughs) mean? That's worth hearing. Wait, what? (laughs) Like, like, and I know that's, that's wild, but, but it's true. Not a lot of people, you know, take us seriously. So to even have an outlet like that, that will take my rantings. I, I feel really, really, really excited about yeah. What, uh, which one of the pieces that you've written for them so far do you feel like the most passionate about? Probably the stuff about like payment processing, because mm-hmm. I think a lot of people don't understand it or accept it because they don't care because it's porn. Mm-hmm. And everyone loves to say that they don't purchase porn or they don't mm-hmm. watch porn or it doesn't matter because it's porn. But the bottom line of a lot of these restrictions like everyone heard about you know Pornhub losing their monetization and OnlyFans almost going down because of you know Visa and MasterCard and I guess my point is that pornographers should not be the only ones fighting against this because it affects us but like what the actual fuck kind of precedent is that Mm -hmm. are we as Americans saying I don't care if it's something you don't like right now because it's porn Are we actually saying that we are giving, talk about capitalism on crack, our financial institutions, the power to control freedom of speech? That should stop every American in their tracks. Mm. That should give every American a moment to pause because it's porn today. But I bet each and every one of you likes something that's controversial Mm -hmm. to somebody. Mm -hmm. So... That is a slippery slope. Yeah. So, yeah, I like writing about stuff like that to, like, maybe get a few other people going, yeah, you know what? That's a really bad idea. You know, I don't, I don't think we should give them that power. 
I don't really care about porn, but I really like cigarettes or marijuana or violent video games or whatever the hunting or guns or I don't know, any controversial subject, religion, like political opinions. Are, are, where, where do we stop censoring? Yeah. And who do we allow to censor? Yeah. MasterCard? Yeah. Really? Well, that kind of brings up the whole like idea of the future of payment processors yeah. and crypto. Yeah. Do you believe in like a decentralized financial future? Well, I mean, even now our money is just a concept, right? right? We haven't been on the gold standard since whenever the fuck, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, so yeah, why not? You know, why, why couldn't that be a reality? I think it'll be a reality if everyone decides it's a reality, yeah. right? If we put our collective faith in it, then it's real. Uh, and I wonder how long the governments of the world will allow it to be truly free. Yeah. You know, There's once be restrictions it's, yeah. Sure. So I, I think we'll have a really interesting moment. And then I think it'll become a lot like our current currency. Mm. We'll see. Yeah. Well, I'm certainly not an expert, but like, I do know that our governments love control and it seems like that could be a really beautiful free marketplace. And I don't think that that I don't know that any, I don't know that powerful people like the word free marketplace. <laughs> yeah. Especially when it comes to money. So, right. You know. But I don't know. I mean, it's interesting. Uh -huh. It's like with this new world and with the internet and, you know, um, I mean, could the fight back be, be easier now? Yeah, you absolutely. Know, with Do they have less control now? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's an interesting And it might time. be better for a lot of countries if there were some sort of stable crypto. Like That's there are countries where inflation is out of control. There are like, maybe it could even stabilize something. That's why you see a lot of these other countries looking to put um, their money in crypto because of the lack of stabilization of their current currency. Yeah, it's absolute sure. bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. It's an interesting time to be it alive. Is. It is. And that would solve a lot of the adult mm -hmm. issues, you know, the adult content issues. Yeah. And when I say solve, I don't want anyone to think I'm trying to get away with not having people with age verification or not yeah. having paperwork. I think that those things are vital. Mm -hmm. But, like, should I have to turn in all my paperwork to Instagram? Yeah. And how would they hold it properly? Yeah. Like, it's my bad if I fuck up my paperwork, it's not OnlyFans bad or Pornhub's bad or X videos bad or, you know what I mean? These are Instagrams, Twitters, just because they handle porn, they're just content collection sites. I'm responsible for my paperwork. But also you know? too, you see this trend and I saw it, Adriana Chechik mentioned this on Twitter and, and you responded that OnlyFans just like took her gaping videos like away. Oh like, yeah. Just, just pulled it. And these are, this is yeah. videos created about, with consenting adults with correct. IDs and, and correct. paperwork. So because like what's the decided, basis for that? Well, but MasterCard and Visa have always done that to us. Why can't we tie all four limbs down and fuck? Why can't we put a thumb in when we're fisting? Why can't we do a hundred things? Cause they said so. Yeah. Not cause it's illegal. So like, okay, maybe they'll say I'm not allowed to pick my nose on film anymore. I just have to bow fucking down because they control their, they control the money. So they control me and they've made only fans like vanilla, mm. Van like, yeah. well, thank God I make a lot of my money on vanilla content, but like, they don't even allow you to like put the panties that you're wearing close up or into your vagina. I don't get what's. I was the, doing a I live show and I didn't even put the panties all the way into my own vagina where they were resting five seconds before, but I like made a show of wiping up how wet I was and kind of like dipping them in a little and oh, that got taken down and I got a warning because it's an object not meant for sex. Oh, right. I forgot about that new requirement. So yeah, so now you're going to 
But is a jelly dildo I got from China that's going to burn my vagina into a crisp where I'll need to go to the doctor's 10 seconds later an object meant for insertion? Yeah, it probably is. Yeah, and how but do you my think decide organic what- cotton underwear, I guess, shouldn't come anywhere near my vagina, according to MasterCard. Good thing they let me know how to keep my vagina safe. Thank God for them. Yeah, because you have I, no I would have experience. no idea what to do otherwise. So now I think I should buy toxic dildos from China and keep my organic cotton underwear far, far away from my lady bits. It's just so crazy. Like, what? How did they just... That is just such a strange... We're letting them. And but, I don't mean we as pornographers. Like I mean we as society. A weird thing to, like... I just imagine 10 old dudes in a room with angry Karen wives being like, oh, you can't do that. <laughs> You're like, that's my imagination. But like the rules are so dumb. It seems to be made up by like a small amount of like old angry people yeah. who like have the worst sex. Like the worst <laughs> sex. <laughs> so Don't put you- underwear there. <laughs> like- that's just such. It's so weird to me. Like I In don't. Your anus? Oh, like, <laughs> bitch! What? Yeah, that's some crazy shit. Yeah. So what? Um, what is in the future for Cherie Deville besides like a lot of amazing Christmas celebrations <laughs> that we are they're that, attending that together? That we are attending yeah. together in the next few. Maybe weeks? they'll serve me alcohol this time. Remember they turned me away last you time. You have your ID. Is I that guess why? not, but like. I'm the internet's favorite stepmom also, and top like, milk. And this is not. You should have shown like, them your milk. I think I'm a good-looking woman. Yeah, but I'm not a 20-year-old looking woman. No, and I'm really okay with that. Yeah, you know what I mean, like. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, what's so what's uh I don't know. What do you have? I'm just gonna keep going. Yeah. Until people stop buying my shit. <laughs> Forever, like. I will be doing nursing home orgy seven if they let me, the one on the walker. Like, that'll be me if they let me. Yeah. (laughs) If people are buying it when I'm 80, I'll be doing it. (laughs) I believe it. I believe it. Well, I would, I would buy that. I mean, that's a lie. I don't buy anybody's porn, but I would, I would, I would if it, if, if I, I would post endorse it, it for free. <laughs> yeah. If you posted it for free, I might like uncomfortably watch it yeah, you and might, be like, yeah. that's my friend. That's just weird. <laughs> it's funny. Like I can shoot you in a scene, but that's like for me to now. sit down and watch you in a scene, like, yeah, is different. It is different. Yeah. There's... Although I was super excited to see your boobs that day, the first day that I saw your boobs. Oh, in yeah. the, at the Korean spa? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With Danny? When you guys were both trying to like not, not like look at my look. boobs? <sighs> so obvious. Like both of you were like staring intently into my eyes. I'm like, I think I even said, I'm like, guys, just... You Here. did. You Here gave me the hall pass. You're like, just, can you please get it over with and stare at my breasts so we can like have a normal fucking day? Because that won't be weird, but this is weird. You guys are being really fucking weird. <laughs> and we were. <laughs> and then we were like, okay. <sighs> okay. <laughs> oh my God. Well, now everybody can go to my OnlyFans and see my boobs. So. Thank God. You know, you go. just, <laughs> but they were a hot commodity for a time. They, they were. were really and now everyone's like, yeah, now everyone's like, I've seen them. When are you like going to spread your vagina? I'm like, I'm just not there yet. You know what? Maybe never. <laughs> Maybe never. You. Good you chance that it may. I right now I'm saying never, but I also said I would never pose nude. So who knows? Who knows? Who knows? The future is a mysterious <laughs> place. <Yeah. laughs> oh Those of us who want to see it can only hope. <laughs> Shree, it was so good to see you again. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Can you tell everybody where they can find you online? Yeah. So as of this moment, I still have my Instagram, (laughs) which is Shree Deville XO, my TikTok, Shree Deville XO, Twitter, Shree Deville, and I'll guide you everywhere from there. One of them will probably still be alive by the time this podcast comes out. Which is only next week, but well, yeah, things that's can a change. long time. Yeah. <laughs> I've actually stopped linking girls' Instagrams like on my YouTube channel, and I just do their Twitter because like girls' Instagrams get taken down so often that I'm just like I'm just gonna put your Twitter up, and then they can find your new Instagram, or if you decide not to reopen it, whatever. I know. Yeah. yeah. 
Ugh. Well, one day, what are you going to do? I don't know. Just keep putting up new Instagrams, I guess. Keep putting up new. Yeah. Just keep putting more smut out there. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and you guys can find me at Holly Randall on Twitter and on Instagram for now. I am also still still up there, but next week, who knows? Um, I'm also on TikTok. Uh, Holly Randall unfiltered. Crazy, right? I, I didn't even know that. Yeah. I just where we put out um, clips from my podcast. I occasionally shoot um, custom, custom, new content for it, but not often. I'm really not good at it. I'm just. I would have come in with seven drafts ready for you if I had known. Really? That you were TikToking. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, next time. Next time. Next time. <laughs> Maybe you can come over and we can do like a TikTok day. I would love a TikTok Because I really don't, mm -hmm. like, I don't have any ideas. I have ideas. I just don't. I've, they're weird and dumb, but you know what? Okay. We're, we're, <laughs> okay. They're there. All right. I would love to. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, if you guys want to watch this podcast live, like I'm doing right now, you can go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall unfiltered and also get access to all other kinds of bonus content. Thank you guys so much for joining us and we'll see you next week.